contact Linda. Mm -hmm. um, Linda DeAngelis, so please, um, um, you know, order something, a mask, a t-shirt, a mug, something. Uh, he also sent out dates for the NJFCC competitions. One of them um, is October 3rd, so it's coming up real soon, and that's the uh, Hand a Man, uh, OK, and Creative. So um, please make sure you, um, <clears throat> you know, be aware that that's a short deadline is coming up very quickly. Um, we're looking to um, move back the gallery show that we were supposed to have in November. Um, and um, we're waiting to get a, a, a new date and hopefully that'll be pretty soon. Let's see what else we have. Um, I think Matt, do you wanna cover um, uh, topics for next year? Uh, sure. Uh, topics for next year, I'm actually working on an email to send out right now um, and a Google form like I had last year. Uh, this way you can just fill out the form with what you hope to have as your topic to shoot next year. Uh, we will be trying to go through the last couple of years and make sure that we're not overlapping any topics that we've covered already. So if you have something that you love and you'd like to shoot make sure you send it to me but if we've done it in the last two or three years it's not even going to be added to the list to pick from because in the end we want to grow as a club and not just shoot the same things over and over and over again and the only way to do that is to get rid of topics that we've already covered many times over um, i will send out that email hopefully tonight as soon as i fix my google form up and uh, you guys can start sending them in to me I'm going to give you until um, October 3rd to give me all your topics. And then you're going to have uh, two weeks to vote or a week to vote on it, I believe. And then we will uh, cover what was selected at the next competition meeting. So a month from today. And that's about it. Thanks, Matt. Think a little bit too about stretch goals. You know, it's one thing to, you know, photograph an object, of, you know, a, a subject, but what, what can we do that might be a little different? Like I remember one year we did double exposures or, um, you know, maybe selective color or something that, that will be a little, little bit of a challenge for everybody so that we grow as photographers. So think about that too, what you might wanna learn or do that you haven't done uh, before or something that you like to do that maybe might be fresh and new to other members. Um, and that's about it on that. Uh, Melinda, can you unmute Melinda, please? Melinda, I know you yes, sent out something on um, today on NJFCC, but if you want to talk sure. about it, because I, I know not everyone's gotten that email yet for whatever okay. reason, servers are a little slow. All right. Well, I sent out the email, I guess it was around five o'clock. Um, giving the uh, competition deadlines for the PSA, uh, which are, I will say now, October 31st is the deadline for the first round. January 30th is the deadline for the second round and March 27th is the deadline for the third round. Um, the category is general, so there's no, um, it's unrestricted. There's, there's nothing that you can't submit um, there is one major change. Um, you have to complete the permission form, which is attached to the email, uh, and send it back to me, preferably as a PDF file. I guess you can print it, sign it, and scan it, or if you know how to go into, I guess it's Photoshop maybe, and sign it. But anyway, um, I have to have that form in order for us to compete in the PSA competitions. Um, basically, the instructions for uploading are the same. If you want to upload pictures for all three rounds at the same time, you can. The, our website is open, so uh, you can 
submit up to six photos per round. Uh, and then I also attach the year end uh, standings that I received from the PS uh, chairperson or whatever, PSA chairperson that just gives the, uh, the end of the year results as far as uh, each club's points, uh, the different groups A through I think now F, uh, what, what clubs are being bumped up to the next level or the next group, couple are being bumped down. Um, which really doesn't affect us. Um, that's about it. But um, if you want to email me, if you don't get the email from me, please email me at mlmatlack at gmail.com so that I can send you the uh, attached the, or the permission, the yeah, the permission form or the, the release for your images for PSA. Regardless of whether they use them or not, they, they need the form filled out giving them uh, permission to use your photos. That's about it. Okay, thanks. Um, Valerie, do you have anything you want to tell us about uh, speaker for next month? Ron Wyatt is our speaker for next month. And the topic is how to self-assign a topic, build a portfolio and tell a story. So we've had Ron speak, but it's been a couple of years since he's been here and it's a brand new presentation. So we hope to see you all there. It will also be our last speaker for the year. Terrific, thank you, Valerie. Short and sweet. Um, Will, I don't, Will, do you have anything? Nope, okay, he's shaking his head. All okay, right. I won't unmute him then. <laughs> <laughs> don't even bother. <laughs> All right, and I'm looking at names to see who I don't recognize. I see we have a Marie, uh, you made it easy, Marie. You said, Marie, I'm Lynn's friend. It says in your, your little uh, box there. So um, welcome, Marie. I know um, Lynn said she invited some folks from uh, the camera club that's starting up in her community um, to uh, see what a competition is like. So if you're in that category, Marie, welcome. Um, let's see who else. Uh, Becca, or we know you. Um, some people who come that um, Walter Blitz, we know you. Jerry Lerner, we know you. Let's see. Some people are guests, but we know them already, which is nice. All right. Um, I don't see anybody else new. Okay. Other than, of course, um, Lisa Langell, who is going to be doing our judging today. So I would like to read um, Lisa's bio and find that. I put In the meantime, in. Valerie and I will start turning people's videos off. Or if you turn your video off yourself, you'll be able to turn it back on later. Okay. That's a pro tip right there. Oh, isn't that interesting? <laughs> Alisa, did you want to share any of your images before we start? Yeah, I can certainly do that. And then I just have one quick clarifying question. I know we went through everything before when we chatted, but I'm going to offer a brief critique on each image, correct, Matt? Correct. Okay, perfect. And then at the end, you'll tell me the how many awards and I'll pick the final number, the final images, correct? Yeah, I'll tell you actually in the beginning of each, before we okay. even start. All right, um, perfect. I just, I've done a few of these lately and I want to make sure that I didn't cross rules from one group to another group. Yeah, no, so. definitely. <laughs> awesome. we'll, we'll steer you in the right direction. <laughs> All right, good. You know, I don't want egg on my face for, you know, all these brand new people that just joined as well. And welcome to those new people. This is awesome. Uh, so anyway, Debbie, sorry about that. <laughs> no problem. No problem. We're, we're very happy to have you. And I would like to uh, read your, your bio. You are uh, in Scottsdale, Arizona, and I heard you say earlier that it is quite hot there. Yes, um, <laughs> 101. Uh, yeah, I think, I think I'm glad I'm in New Jersey today. I think you are. Get rain tomorrow. Oh. <laughs> we <laughs> can use Lisa, it. <laughs> Lisa's a nature photographer, a birder from the age of eight, she, and she is the founder of Langell Photography, um, and we uh, gave that in the uh, email, so you have the link to her uh, website. And more recently, she's also um, collaborated on another website called um, focusyourart.com. 
She began her own business in 2010 after long careers as a floral designer, an educational psychologist, a consultant, and helping in um, launch and manage two startups that grew into leading companies in the educational technical space. Since then, she's earned numerous awards and has been published in Outdoor Photography, Arizona Highways, which I recall is a gorgeous magazine, uh, Ranger Rick, Images Arizona, and more. Uh, she's a board of directors member for the North American Nature Photography Association, is an ambassador for Tamron, PhotoPro, and, oh. and she's a judge for ViewBug. She loves creating nature photography and art that's inspired by her background in psychology and design. And when she's not having fun making photos, she's thriving on teaching photos. Her humility and passion for both shines through and how she provides memorable, fun, and educational experiences that enrich, invigor, and expand photographers' minds in wonderful ways. Um, Lisa, let me just read the um, information again on the competition. Uh, tonight, we're doing Garden Wildlife. Our garden, our own gardens are, and our oases and public gardens such as Rutgers or Sand are rich in wildlife, bees, butterflies, spiders, dragonflies, birds, hummingbird, moss, frogs, and other insects. Um, the challenge is to photograph close-up plants and their wildlife visitors or ponds and their wildlife visitors. Any type of wildlife that you will see in the garden is fine. And Hand of Man is also fine uh, in this competition. So um, Lisa, welcome. We are very happy to have you. Um, we'll work together tonight to do this competition and we have a nice turnout and we're really looking forward to uh, having you teach, teach us as we, we uh, as you critique our uh, images. Well, thank you. And I, I appreciate so much being here. And by the way, I love that there's some new people joining in. Welcome aboard. And I'm going to hopefully make this fun and educational. Um, and Matt, if you could tell me real quickly, just so I budget our time and we're not here till midnight, um, how many images total and about how long do you usually go or do you want to go tonight? So do you have a ballpark on that? Uh, we have, uh, what is it, 20, 30, 40, 50, well, close to 60 images we have. So okay. a, a decent amount. Okay, very good. That helps. I just, you know, want to kind of budget our time and, yeah, and uh, you know, not keep you till 1 a.m. Although I would if you wanted me to. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. You should be able to share your screen now if you have a... Yes, yes, I can. Um, Just remember, I... Lisa, you're an hour behind us, so you're out. <laughs> yes, two hours, yes, two hours, two hours, hours uh... behind. Yeah, two hours behind. So yeah. I'm going to do this really quickly. Um, let me just bring this over on my screen here. So this is a culmination of a few different things. It's some of my more artistic things that I do where I shoot hummingbirds on high key. It's more traditional photography, kind of a different mix of my art side and my traditional side, uh, but it's all things that are backyard type photography. So um, in this case, some of these in high key are done with natural light. Some are done in a studio setup. Some are done like this in the garden. It's just a little smattering of different things that I like to do that represents different sides of my photography. So um, there's just a handful of images here and uh, I know they're going pretty quickly, but tonight is really about you. So I want to give you ideas of things that you can do with your photography. Um, that one was just in a gallery last week and sold. So, um, you know, wildlife and all forms, you know, and people enjoy it. And I love delivering really pretty artwork for people um, in their home or offices. So anyway, that's just a little quick smattering of the things that I like to do. So I think this is just about finished. All right. So um, on that note, let me know. Um, I can stop sharing my desktop here. Let me know um, how you want me to begin, and I'll be glad to, to do so. And I appreciate everyone who submitted tonight. I'm looking forward to these very much. Excellent. Let me uh, share my screen here. You should be able to see um, a yes. runner. OK. Uh, we're going to start with our group one. Uh, we have four images. OK. Uh, so we're going to look for a first place. All right. And here we go. 
All right. And I'll read the titles, Lisa. Okay. Purple Haze. Okay. Are we going to do a quick cycle through all of them and then I'll critique, or do you want me to start critiquing the first one? Typically, we don't. Um, so you can start critiquing okay. right in the first one. All right. Very good. Well, I love these plants. These are so beautiful with the color. Great title, by the way. I'm a big fan of really using really nice titles for things. Um, and I like your composition of kind of that darkest but brightest pink there right in the center. Everything appears to be reasonably in focus from everything that I can tell and your exposure looks really nice. I like kind of the the um, compressed feeling of all of those plants. So nicely done in that diagonal line that those dark pink flowers have through the center works well for me. I really like that. And then we just need a score. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> my pet. Thank you for reminding me, Matt. So um, out of a seven, six to nine, I am going to give this a seven. Yeah, um, I have to back up here for a minute. Um, that image, and, and it looks like this one too. Um, there's supposed to be wildlife in these images. And I'm I'm not seeing any wildlife. So they're beautiful images, but um, okay. I'm not sure, Matt, what we need to do here. And and I did wonder about that, but I thought, well, people might be considering plants as na nature. But um, I'll go with it's defer it's with whatever you nature, think. Nature, but it was yeah supposed to be wildlife. So. Um, Yeah, I, I just if it doesn't qualify, Lisa, just give it a, a, a six. Okay, going by your you're definition. Welcome to, you're welcome to critique them because I, okay. you know, I need to see yeah. people not get an idea of Absolutely. what you think of the photo, but um, Absolutely. there's supposed to be wildlife in the photo. Okay. Okay, so, um, you know, given the wildlife criteria, I, I have to give this one a six, but I will give this person credit for the fact, you know, these three ripe cherry tomatoes, three is always a good number to use. I appreciate your composition with it. I like the strong leading lines of the stems coming down in the image. Um, a couple of suggestions for you is there's a lot of glare on those tomatoes because the sun probably was coming through from the top and you have these, these little spots of dappled light Light, which can be um, hijacking my eye. When I look through the image, those little dots and the, the light coming through really kind of distract me. And so a couple of suggestions, if you were to shoot this again, go and grab a diffuser. It can even be a piece of poster board or, you know, a screen. Those diffusers are 10, 15 bucks a piece, not much on, you know, Amazon or your camera store of choice. And just have someone or you hold that over the plant and diffuse that light. And it's going to give you softer light, better reflections. You're still going to have that shape and contour of the light, but it won't be blown out in those areas um, of highest where it's glary in this case. So I would try those things um, and reshoot that image and enter it in a future competition. Excellent. I'm just going to uh, go back to the previous image as well and fix the score when we're done. Okay. Thank you. Okay. All right. So I, I amazing tulip. So I don't see wildlife in this one. So for that matter, I will give it a six. Um, but in this case, I give the person credit. Pink is such a hard color to shoot in broad sunlight. And it looks like this has been done in broad sunlight by some of the light coming back and the, the reflections that I see. It can be really easy to clip or overexpose your uh, pink colors and a lot of this still looks really good. I would also offer the suggestion of using a diffuser. Um, it's just a thin screen that just breaks up some of that light and scatters it better. And then you would shoot the flower in the shadow of the diffuser. And that can really help you quite a bit. I love the, 
kind of top down perspective and the three petals and three petals on an angle almost looks like a trillium times two. Um, so I really like those aspects. A couple other suggestions when you get around the edges of the image and you have a lot of kind of high contrast areas, those shadows and bright spots in the foliage, that diffuser is going to help that as well. But in the interim, try toning down your highlights in those areas using post processing and, uh, you know, pull down highlights and use an adjustment brush and just just tone those down because those, all those little white spots pull my eye there. And then it wonders why it's there. There's nothing really meaty for me to be able to, to see there. It's just pulling my eye away from the subject and your background should support the subject. So again, try those little tips and, and shoot it again. Um, you've got a lot of things right with your focus. I love the square crop. All those things are good. Beautiful bee. All right. So I love the composition on this and the general just beautiful pink tones with this image. I think that is really neat. I love the cluster of the, the stamens in that flower and kind of how it really dominates that, that scene. And then the bees right there, your composition spot on. And I think the square crop is a really nicely done thing. Pink and green are opposite colors on the color wheel. So nice use of color harmony here. Um, some suggestions, it looks like it's very heavily cropped. Um, it could also also be that you're using maybe a cell phone or you know something where um, propping it at all kind of gives you some troubles. I would try a different technique or, or a different lens or something like that where you don't have to crop in so much. And I think that's going to get rid of some of that pixelization and the appearance that this is somewhat blurry. Because I, I think it was in focus, but it's just over pixelated and kind of over enlarged um, or cropped. And I think that is um, one of the one of the detriments here. Uh, so I would try that again the next time you get to shoot it. But there's a lot of things done really well here. And I love that little punch of green and then all the pink. It's very pretty. I would just need a score. Oh, so sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks for being my reminder. I'm so in the habit of doing this a different way from last night. We did like 140 images. So forgive me. So on this one, I would give it a seven. Thanks, Matt. Sorry about that. <laughs> uh, no problem. Uh, let's see here. Oh, we have two sevens, but one of them is out of seven. So this one's not a seven. That one is a seven. That's going to get the first place. All right. And we won't get to see that because it's the only one. So we're okay. moving on to group two. Okay. We have uh, 14 images. We need a first, second, third, and three HMs. Okay. And here we are. Okay. No, I'm not sharing. <laughs> beautiful image of this hawk and uh, I can appreciate the luck in getting that type of image with the mouse, um, you know, in the backyard or wherever this this was in the garden. Um, really nice job get, getting it sharp, getting something happening with that hawk as opposed to just a hawk sitting there. I mean, clearly I can see the prey. Um, your background is, you know, subdued. It's not overtaking the image, which I really like. Um, that white rock in the lower left hand side, it's not really white, but it's a light color. It kind of pulls my eye down there and I don't feel the need to be down there. So I think if you just, again, I'm gonna talk a little post-processing, tone that down a little bit, just pull the highlights down a little bit, make that more muted. Or, you know, in some cases you can clone it out. Um, I would just do that. It's not horrible, but it, it just would improve that image. Same with that light green patch on the upper right hand side. It just pulls my eye over a little bit. And perhaps you could crop it and leave a little bit more room on the left hand side and take a little bit more room from the right hand side. And that could also alleviate some of those issues and balance that picture out a little bit. It's a little bit, um, you know, the subject is on the left hand side looking towards the left might if you moved him over a foot or so it might you know make it a little better those are some really minor suggestions uh but otherwise really nice image nice and sharp and the exposure is really well done so i'm going to give this one an eight garden dragonfly 
All right, I really like this. This is very an interesting way of photographing the dragonfly. I've not seen an image quite like this before. And I've seen a lot of dragonflies living here in this desert Southwest. I really like this. I like your exposure of both the, the dragonfly and the flowers. Um, really pretty tones in this as well. And I, I just genuinely enjoy looking at this. I think it's really neat how the dragonfly is horizontal. So often I see them on the end of a stick and people photograph that. And it's like, I've seen that a million times. This is different. Um, I like the way the flowers work with this image and that you can still see the wings and, and all of those things. The focus looks really nice. Um, I noticed that the wings on the bottom just touch the edge of the image. I'm wondering if there's a little bit more room. It just feels a little bit tight on that side. If you could just leave a little bit more room for the edge of those wings and then some space. Um, but that would be my only real critique with that. I think this is a lovely image and I will give it an eight as well. Hummingbird moth. Boy, we've had a ton of these in Arizona this year, just an explosion. And it's not something that you know, we see nearly as often as we have this year. So it's nice to see someone entering a photograph of one. Um, of course, you're on the East Coast, but uh, you know, you know what I mean. Um, this is nice with your color combination. I like the oranges, the pinks, the yellows, the greens. It's very vibrant. I really like that. I also enjoy the fact that your wings appear to be pretty frozen. Um, these hummingbird moths go pretty quickly as far as their wing beats um, and the sphinx, sphinx moths as well. So good job in getting those wings pretty sharp. Um, I like the way it's just tilted a little bit to the side. It's not just straight up and down. So nice job. And I like the diagonal line that you created with the pink flowers. And then it continues on to that stem just below the left wing of the bird. Like that really works really well. You have great composition with this. Um, some things that I, I feel could improve, again, it, it, maybe it's just my computer, but it feels very heavily cropped. Um, and again, it could be with a cell phone and you're doing the very best you can with the equipment that you have. And I get that, I really do. But it's just, I feel like the image is losing clarity and, and some sharpness because of that. So I would, you know, again, try, um, try understanding your equipment and what things really you can do well with it. Every piece of equipment has its strengths and its limitations. Doesn't matter if it's $20,000 piece of gear or a $10 piece of gear. Um, understand a little bit more about that generally as you work in your photography. But your eye, your, your sharpness, your composition look really, really good. It would just work on that resolution and kind of figuring out where that sweet spot is for cropping and, and what you can do with your images. Um, I will give this a seven. Hardworking honeybee. <laughs> All right. It's good to see them. We're losing quite a few of our bees. So I always appreciate uh, when someone notices a bee and, and takes a picture to that help us all pay attention to it. Nice composition with the center of the flower in the upper right hand side. Um, I would like to see the eye of the bee a little bit better. It's sort of looking away from the photographer. And if you spent a little more time, I wonder if it wouldn't come around to the top side or go to another flower nearby. Um, I feel like I'm looking more at its wings and its hind end than I, I am looking at the head. So I think that would improve your image, but I really like the way the flowers come Composed, your background supports the subject. It doesn't take away from it. Really nice exposure. Um, again, I'm seeing a little bit of, I feel like maybe overcropping or a little bit of um, focus issues on this. So I would work on that as well. But the square crop does work quite nicely. I'm going to give this a seven. Iridescent. All right. I, I love that this butterfly seen better days like it, it tells a story in that alone about what it's been up to over the past, you know, week or two of its life. Um, really interesting, bright uh, green line kind of coming through. I think that's a strong effect in that image and then the way it's sitting on the leaf as well. Really nicely done. I see so many people who shoot butterflies top down. I love it when people take a different angle to it. So I really enjoy that from 
from that perspective. Your image looks sharp. The lighting looks nice. I can see both antenna. That's another thing that people often cut off. Um, the one suggestion that I would have, and again, it depends on whether or not you can utilize these things, but just in general, non-competition, let's say, um, that green spot in the upper right-hand side of the image, I would clone that out or get rid of it because it's really drawing my eye up there and, and it's kind of competing for attention with the butterfly itself. And to some extent, I would tone down that green to the left of the butterfly, not the thin line, but that that piece in the upper left hand side. If you can post process those things in a way that just gently tones them down, mutes those those colors, your butterfly will stand out more and I think you'll have an even stronger subject. Uh, but I do appreciate what you've done with this and uh, I will give this a seven. Lisa? Yes. Would you like a pointer or something? Well, um, I don't think, yes, I would, except I don't have those options um, here, unless you maybe made me a co-presenter or something, but um, I don't have the ability to use, um, there are no. You should uh, have a, a section that says annotate on your screen. Yeah, I don't in my view. I think you need a. Um, I just I just turned it on, so maybe mm, maybe it'll work now. Uh, let's see here. I've got reactions. Um, I've got participants chat, share screen, record reactions. I wonder if I have to share my own screen, which wouldn't work in this case. Um, no, no, well, we've used it before. Uh, look at the top. View options, click annotate. Oh, okay, sorry, sorry, annotate. There we go, all right, my bad, didn't see that. Um, I'm usually delivering the Zoom, not sitting on the other end, so yeah, <laughs> thank yeah, yeah. you for letting me know. All and right. This, this Lisa is uh, called Monarch Butterfly on a Butterfly Weed. Okay, and it is working. I just drew a little circle to make sure that that was working. That had nothing to do with my uh, Im the image critique. And thank you for the title for that. Uh, beautiful sharpness and focus on this butterfly. I really genuinely enjoy it. And you can see, you know, this butterfly, even though it's not looking at the photographer, I can clearly connect with the eyes and the eyes are sharp, which on a butterfly, a lot of times people will focus on the wings and the eyes get out of the focus or the thorax will. Um, so this is very nicely done. I love the colors that it's sitting on as well. It really ties through that orange. And the diagonal lines, again, kind of with these weeds, just or the flowers that it's on, it really helps. And even this little cluster up here of the uh, flower uh, buds really does help. So I really like it from those perspectives. Um, I can't say a lot that I would change about this. I think you did a good job with the focus and a good job with the exposure. I don't see a lot of hot spots and bright spots that would take my eye away and up into a corner or things like that. So I really like this. I think the square crop works well and I'm gonna give this an eight. Halloween treat. All right, perfect timing for this time of year. I love the fact that you caught the animal doing something exactly like what a squirrel would do. It's like, it's perfect. It captures what these animals are all about, which is getting into mischief and figuring out food sources. And that punch of color with the pumpkin really works well. And I really like the fact that you got the eye in focus, given that it's tricky to do, you've got a pumpkin that's wanting to take that focus. And if you focused on the pumpkin without, you know, being very careful with your aperture settings, that eye would be out of focus and you got the eye in focus. So good job for that. Um, the whole thing really just works and tells a story. Your background doesn't really distract me and you don't have anything in the foreground that distracts and all supports the squirrel. So I really like this. I like your composition, your exposure is correct. Um, you know, nothing's too bright or too dark. And I'm going to give that an eight. Here's looking at you. <laughs> So here's an example of something looking at the photographer and what a difference that it makes. This is beautiful. Um, I love that you caught it looking right at you. And here's a little bit of trivia for you, but uh, praying mantis can actually kill 
a hummingbird. So I photograph hummingbirds a lot here in Arizona and, and run workshops out here. And I'm always on the lookout for these guys. A really nice job in, in getting that sharp. And I mean, you can really see the details in the eyes, the lighting, all of that is really, really nice. What I would try to do, and good job but keeping the antenna, this area up here, what I would do again, you know, if you can do so is what I would do is I would tone that down that bright spot up there pulls my eye up there. So as a little rule of thumb is your eyes tend to go to the very brightest things first, and then the darkest. If there are things that are high contrast, and they're adjacent to each other, you know, white against black, let's say, or anything in that realm, that really pulls your eye in first. So I do see high contrast here, that works. But up here, even though it's not as high contrast, that white flower in the upper right hand side really does kind of pull my eye up there. So if you can tone that down somehow, and then this little white spot here, maybe even these little yellow things here, that will just start to keep my eye more towards the center where your subject is. But nice job on the cropping, nice job on the focus and getting that bug to look right at you. I'm gonna give this an eight. Cicada on sage. All right, so this was the year of the cicada. I love it. Um, again, good job with focus. Sometimes people miss the focus. They don't get the eyes in focus. And if you don't have the eyes in focus, nothing else matters. So good job with that. I like the, um, the way these leaves kind of span out. You've got diagonal lines, which I've said it many times before tonight, but I really like them. And I like how the cicada is positioned as well. Um, I think that looks really good in your background doesn't distract me. You put a vignette around here, which I'm not against. I would just tone it down a little bit. It's a little bit strong. And this is personal taste for me. But when I get real strong vignettes, I feel like I'm looking at a photo from, you know, high school senior pictures from 1980, where they really used a lot of strong vignettes. And that's my own just personal choice of, you know, it's not something I would just tone it down a little bit, maybe even do it by hand. So it isn't quite so perfect, right? Just just tone it down a little bit. And I think your eye is going to draw in nicely to this uh, cicada as well. I'm going to give this a seven. Clipper butterfly feeding. All right, nice composition with this. And I love the color, the, the purples and the yellows, those kind of colors go together well. They're, they're opposite or close to it on the uh, color wheel. So I'm always looking at color. I like that you got a sideways horizontal, you know, kind of eye level perspective of this moth and you've got the proboscis going right into the flowers. Those things are cool. I am wondering if this was either a, um, a post-processing technique or whether it was very heavily cropped, but I feel like um, and I'm not against doing all kinds of creative post-processing things, but I feel like it's, it's not quite right for, from one reason or another. I would keep working with that. And I'm going to assume just for the sake of it, that it was just really heavily cropped somehow. I'm seeing a lot of pixelization and, and kind of some loss of detail here, but I get it. I get it when you don't have, you know, potentially, you know, long lenses or you're doing the best you can with what you got. And so from that perspective, focus aside and kind of pixelization aside, beautiful composition, beautiful light and exposure. I would just like to see a little bit more of a, a highlight in this eye. I know bugs eyes are different than human eyes, but you usually still will have some contouring with light. And that's something you can uh, work on in post-processing very gently to kind of restore that potentially. Um, but I do really love the crop and the composition and the color harmony quite a bit. I'll give this a seven. Squirrel eating sunflower. All right, another one getting into mischief, but uh, in a good way. It's fall, they need to get their food. So I like that you captured the animal doing something. You know, so often people will just photograph something standing there and that's not very interesting. This is telling a story and you can even see the sunflowers right behind here. So I like that from that perspective. 
couple things I think that would help your image more. And I realize these are not always possible. So just as just a note for the future is try to get down at eye level as best as you can. I realize that's not always physically possible um, or you might scare the animal away, but a general rule of thumb, the more we can be on their level, it's like photographing kids, photographing kids from top down, is a different perspective than getting down at their eye level. So whenever you can do that with wildlife, try it. And then I also feel like maybe this has some focus issues. This back here looks more in focus. And if you look at the eye of the wood here, that looks more in focus than this does. So I think your camera may have missed the focus on the uh, squirrel. I don't know what camera this was photographed with, but you can move your focus points around if you work on focus point settings so that you can put the focus point on the eye. Or if you're using touchscreen technology, you can touch the eye and put the focus point there. Um, and that I think is going to help you. But your exposure looks good. Nothing's too bright or too dark. Um, very pleasing. You've caught the little spillage of all the sunflower bits in front of it. And those are kind of complete in there. And I do like that. And you have this uh, squirrel a little bit off to the side. So not just smack dab in the center. So those things I think really work. And it's wildlife. Uh, so I'm going to give that a seven. Dinner time. All right. Here we have a bee staring right at the photographer. And it just, and you're at eye level. So just giving you from that perspective, the difference in how much more intimate it feels, how much more present you feel and it feels in that image. This is really nicely done. And I know these images are hard. I'm guessing that this was photographed with a macro lens, meaning you have to get really close to your subject. And that's a little intimidating when it's a bee. So well done from the photographer's perspective. I also love the lighting. If there was uh, either flashlighting used or somehow you were using some kind of either ambient light or otherwise your lighting choice is smart. I like these. Um, hopefully you can see my mouse here. I like that I can see some catch lights in these eyes and I adore that this bee has light and dark here in these front, uh, I think it's legs here. Um, maybe it's antenna that are pointing down. I think it is antenna. I you love it. Click where you're showing uh, Okay, can't see it there. All right, let me try that again. Can you see it now? No. No? All right, um, how about this? Can you see it now? Can you see an arrow? Probably no. not. All right. I wonder why mouse isn't working. You click uh, uh, stamp, you can pick an arrow from that. All right. Let's try that. How about, sorry, my friends, um, hmm, that's not allowing me to do so. It just allows me to stamp it. Um, uh, actually, I could see real quick you stamped somewhere. Yeah, I did. Um, but it just allows me to stamp. It doesn't allow me to move it around. And for some reason, I'm clicking mouse, but it's not uh not working um let me see here uh hold on here let me get this back up the way i had it um give me just a second sorry my friends all right so view options let me try it again annotate and um i guess i'll just draw because that seems to be the only thing that is uh working all right. So um, anyway, I really like the fact that I'm talking about these antenna down here. I really like the fact that those are so sharp and they have such high contrast. It really pulls my eye in. So these highlights and these low lights, all of that stuff takes my attention to a place. And a little technique for all of you the next time you're out in the field, go or you're looking at your images, go and then squint and make everything blurry when you squint. And the highlights and the dark things and anything like that will stand out. And you can instantly see where people's eyes are likely to go first. And so that's a good little trick. Or if there's anything that it's going to that it shouldn't, then you know how to get those out of your images by, you know, reframing it or cropping it or post-processing it. But this is really lovely. I love that the flower part is sharp. I love that this is on a little bit of an angle. It just adds a little extra oomph. And this part is all tack sharp. So I'm I'm going to give this a nine. This is beautiful. Yellow swallowtail. 
All right. Beautiful swallowtail. Perfect condition, too. He must be a, a younger one. Um, really nicely done with this angle. You know, I love diagonals. I've said it before, but that works really well. And then you've got a second diagonal here. So I really like that. Um, your exposure looks really nice on this butterfly. It's not too bright. It's not too dark. It's, it's Goldilocks, right? It's just right. So I love that. I think if you cropped it again, just leave a little more room here outside of that flower or crop it so this looks more intentionally cropped because when it just the edge touches the edge of the picture, it sort of just feels like you don't know what was supposed to happen there. Um, and if you can post process at all and just tone down some of these highlights like so, um, that's going to help you as well. And you could do that with an adjustment brush in Lightroom or Camera Raw, but just start pulling down some of these highlights and that will decrease the clutter. Um, and you can do that. I mean, contrast adjustments in, in most competitions are allowed. And I would just work on those kinds of things by clearing that out a little bit and toning it down, reducing the contrast. Your butterfly is going to stand out more. It'll feel less busy in the background and that background won't compete so much with that butterfly. So that would be my suggestion. I'm going to give that one a seven. I need food. <laughs> Very cute. I love this little sparrow and I think it's a sparrow in there. Um, really nicely done. Love your very intentional narrow vertical crop. I love seeing crops that are different from the traditional eight by 10 or eight by 12 aspect ratio. So I really like this. This looks like maybe, uh, gosh, 10 by 20, maybe even more, um, you know, length. I love this. Um, I think this is great. Your focus here is really good. I can see every detail in that hole. Where I'm struggling is I think it's a shutter speed issue. I don't think it's a focus issue. Your eye looks in focus and extra bonus points for the catch light in that eye. But this this bill, I think it was moving and it's a little bit soft. Um, you're getting some motion blur there. So I don't believe it's so much of a focus issue, although potentially I think it's a shutter speed issue. If you increased your shutter speed, um, I don't know what it was at, but increase it, you know, to one four hundredth of a second, let's say, I bet you you're going to be able to stop the motion in that bill. It might take more, but that would be my only suggestion. The exposure looks good. Your focus looks good in a great little moment. And I know how hard it is to photograph things inside those birdhouses because it's dark and gloomy in there. And you did a good job of, of getting that exposure well. Um, I'm going to give that a seven. All righty, we have uh, one nine, so that's obviously our first place. Okay. And now we have um, these images, and we need our second and third place out of that. All right. So we have this one. Okay. This one. This one, this one, or that one. All right. So uh, in my opinion, second place belongs to the squirrel and pumpkin. I think that's just an adorable shot. Really tells a nice story. And um, for the third place choice, I am going to go with the dragonfly. It was just an unusual shot. Very pretty. Love the lighting and coloring in that one. And then for, uh, you need an honorable mention as well, correct? The, the rest of them are going to be honorable All mentions. right, there we go. We need three of them. One. This is two. And three. All right. And congratulations, everyone. Nice round of images. That was perfect. So now we will review these images. And then we'll take a short five-minute break. Okay. All right, honorable mention. No, I'm not sharing by Greg Brown. Congratulations, Greg.
Monarch on the Butterfly Weed, Mary Little, honorable mention. Congratulations to Mary. Here's looking at you, Greg Brown again. Congratulations again, Greg. And our third place winner, Garden Dragonfly, John Curzel. Congratulations, John. Second place, Halloween Treat, Terry Donofrio. Congratulations, Terry, if you're on. <laughs> All right. I'll uh, put up a quick little five minute timer and we will take a five minute break. All right. And in the meantime, I will allow people to unmute themselves one second. <laughs> Like, it's just interesting how your your travels just make you so much more inquisitive of the world. Oh, yes, it, yes, yes. Yeah. I, have a couple, I have a couple of the trips that the places that I've been that I want to be interested in. So, yeah, that is awesome. And congratulations on your new certificate. That's great. All right. Give me two seconds. I'm going to mute everybody and then I will unmute you and we'll be good to go. OK. Debbie, you should be unmuted. Okay, I think I am. And Lisa, you should be able to unmute. Yes. Excellent. All right, we have, uh, this is our third group. There's uh, 25 images here, so we need a first, second, third, five HMs. All right. And here we go. Get that dog away from me. <laughs> I can imagine the rest of the story with this one. Um, interesting picture. And again, catching that squirrel, you've got the eye in focus. I really like that. I like the colors of the brick. Um, I, I would like to see if, you know, and I know this isn't really possible in this situation. It does tell the story, but I do feel like the downspout really is the star of the show and that might be part of the story where he's you know kind of cowering in that corner but for me that's the first thing that I see and then I notice the squirrel so I, I'm not sure if there's anything you could possibly do to, to change that it is what it is but I do notice the downspout first and I think you probably wanted the squirrel first so I'm wondering if you hung out there longer if you could also get some other photos where the squirrel's a little bit more on the star of the show, but I get the story that you were telling. Uh, I'm gonna give that a seven. Now, where is the hive? <laughs> that is a good question. Um, really nice focus on uh, the bee. It appears to be in focus to me. Um, Although as I'm looking at this a little more carefully, I'm almost seeing it. I want to I take that back a little bit. I'm seeing some of the flowers and the leaves behind the bee a little bit more in focus now that I'm, I'm kind of seeing it a little more clearly. So I think that focus point should have been on the bee instead of on the flowers behind it. Um, so that might be something to work on. But the strengths of this image really are you got your bee in the PowerPoint, right? If you have the rule of thirds, two lines going across two vertically, it kind of creates a, a tic-tac-toe grid of sorts. That bee is right in that upper right PowerPoint where those lines intersect. So kudos for that and you can see the eyes and, and it's kind of a little bit more engaging for the photographer in that way and I love the yellows against the reds like those are two really vibrant colors uh, for me I think if you were to try to do this again um, or in the future for future reference try to shoot if possible at a lower aperture setting I, again I have no data to look at to know what aperture settings these were but the closer you are to your subject then the subject is to the background that's going to give you better and, and more creamier depth of field where that background becomes a little more blurry and the lower the number on the aperture of course can create this the, a similar thing um, so work on that a little bit the background's not horrible but there's a few bright spots and dark spots and I feel like like it could maybe be a little less busy. Um, but overall, nice job with that composition. I really appreciate that so much. I'm going to give that one a seven. Just buzzing around. All right. So I'm noticing a trend with these um, 
uh, and I just lost the word for these flowers, the, the name of them, coneflower, I believe this is on. And if I'm wrong, forgive me. But that spider a few moments ago was on a similar flower and they make for very interesting subjects. So I really like your sharpness. I see you're sharp on the wings. You're sharp on the body. I'm just missing the sharpness on the eye. So perhaps that's a depth of field or a focus point choice that needs to be a little bit adjusted there. But I, I do see the focus in the front with the the different spines of the 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 flower head itself and i think just working on that focus a little bit choosing your focus point more carefully will help that composition looks great i love the color and the way the the flowers and i'm, I'm going to use my um my annotations here a little bit but i love the way you've got all these diagonal lines and, and all of this. I think this is a really beautiful composition. I like the square crop. Um, I would just work on, like if the eye is not in focus, kind of the saying is nothing else matters. And I mean, it matters, but that's really gonna help because that's what we as humans need to connect with first. So I just work on that. But a lot of things work really well here with your exposure, your, um, you know, that that quality of the image is beautiful. It's not overcropped, at least, from what I can tell, I'm going to give this an eight. Out for a walk. <laughs> All right. So these goslings are uh, teenagers at this point. They still have their down, but they're getting big. Um, I like your exposure. Nothing is in, you know, too bright or too dark. Your exposure looks really good. Everybody's in focus, which I really like. Um, that is good. I would maybe give a little more room for this guy to, in theory, walk forward. It feels a little bit close on this edge. And if possible, all these guys are looking down. I would wait for at least this parent to pick the head up so that you could see the head better in that image. I don't know if every gosling needs to have that same thing, um, but I think it would help not having that head buried behind. Um, I know these are all things that require patience and all of that. So, you know, I get that it doesn't always work perfectly, but if I were to shoot it, that's what I would try to do if I had the opportunity to do so again. Um, I'm gonna give this a seven. Can I help you? <laughs> it does look that way, doesn't it? Um, really beautiful dragonfly that you found here. Uh, I do really like the colors quite a bit. Nature just does an amazing job with colors. And I like that you have this beautiful colored background behind it with kind of this limey green color. It ties in nicely with these flowers. It picks up some of the yellow. Here you've got just beautiful colors in here. Um, your wings are tack sharp. Your face is just feeling a little soft to me, and it might just be the way I'm looking at this, you know, through we're on Zoom, right? So I might be just noticing a little bit in that. It's not bad, and maybe it's perfect. I just am not able to tell if I could zoom in, maybe that would help. Um, I'm noticing a little bit of pixelization when we look at the background. I'm seeing a grid. And again, it could be a Zoom thing, but that typically tells me we've cropped in quite a bit. We're really at the extreme end of how much resolution we have and how much we can crop. So I would try just walking forward a little bit more. I don't expect everybody to have super long lenses all the time or anything like that, but just moving yourself forward might help. And again, if it's something on my end visually or, or with the you know technology we have, then I apologize for saying that. I just notice it here. Um, but really nice job of getting a clean background and making sure that those colors really work with that dragonfly. Uh, I'm going to give this a seven. You said seven, correct? Yeah, I just feel like it's a little bit, um, it's just overcropped. And, and you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Matt, because do you see something different or do you also see kind of that grid pattern behind? I don't want to judge something if it's just an artifact of Zoom. I see it. Yeah, I, I believe I see what you're talking about, yes. Okay. It, it's in the image, I believe. Okay. Frisky fawn. Oh, I love this. You've got nice, sharp 
like your details are great. The image is sharp. You don't have motion blur. This required a pretty high shutter speed and you have a command for that. And I really appreciate that you did such a nice job with that. Like this head moves quite quickly uh, when you're, you know, photographing young deer and it e it's easy to blur that. It's easy to blur the feed because you don't have enough shutter speed. So good job for doing that. Your exposure is beautiful. Um, there's not, you know, again, I'm a big big person for not having things over or underexposed that that shouldn't be intentionally that way and you did a really great job i love the action the framing is great you know your your cropping your framing is really good i'm going to give this a 9 i really enjoy it you even got a catch light in the eye I, I believe that's what i see so nice job jeremiah <laughs> i love it i got that song in my head now already um, neat opportunity to catch a, a bullfrog. I know, I'm assuming that's what it is. I know that they're so hard to photograph and they disappear so quickly. Good job. You've got the eyes sharp. I look for that instantly. Uh, really nice job on that. Kind of interesting detail. The repetition with these little circles here um, kind of repeats the circles in the eye and in the uh, tympanum of the ear. Uh, nicely done. One little suggestion, and I've mentioned this several times, you got a lot of bright stuff up here. Just tone those things down in post-processing and maybe add a little more contrast to the frog. And I think you're gonna do even better with that image, but it is a really nice image. I'm gonna give that an eight. Hoverfly resting. What a beautiful flower that that is on. That is gorgeous. Uh, nice flower. The background looks beautiful. I am seeing, again, some pixelization. I'm going to call it that for lack of a better term. I think this feels just overly cropped to me from a photographic quality perspective. There isn't much room for this to go. If you were to blow this up on the wall, you'd get a lot of little squares. But I can appreciate your color, your composition. It looks clear as far as you know there isn't the stuff that shouldn't be blurry isn't blurry i can see clear eyes the wings look clear this flower is beautiful i think the biggest issue here and i think there's still things you could do from an artistic perspective to play with this it just feels a little too too cropped or, or you know blown up too far uh, from my personal taste but there's a lot of things that really look good with it i i do I, I just have, I struggle with kind of taking cropping too far, and I think this is where this went. So I'm going to give it a seven, but from other aspects, I want the person who shot this to know that your composition looks really good. The simple background, the flower, the color harmony, that pink and green, those things are all really good. So just work on the image quality from, you know, maybe walking closer or using a different lens, or if it's an iPhone, um, just understand, or, you know, any kind of mobile phone just understand the limitations and the strengths and that's something that uh, i think you can easily improve upon with that but nice job from the composition and uh, color perspective i'm going to give that a seven mighty monarch all right uh, again, we have nice, clear focus on this proboscis and on the eye. That looks really good from my perspective. I like that you have the blue in the flower and then the blue back here as well. I think that looks really pretty. Um, exposure looks good. A couple of things that I would suggest if you were to take this again would be to pay attention to the shadows because I'm seeing your, your subject is front lit, meaning that the light is coming from behind you, which is something we usually want. Sometimes the shadows can be a little distracting. There's not a great way to eliminate them other than to watch the butterfly you know, move around and see if, if there's a chance of getting rid of it. It's not a deal breaker in this case, but it's something I pay attention to. And then the flower itself, I don't know if it moved. Um, it just feels blurry to me. And it's odd that this would be so out of focus and this would be so in focus unless maybe you were using extremely shallow depth of fields or a macro uh, lens that, that created that much blur in a, in a piece that's really only, you know, at best, maybe a half inch, maybe an inch at the most from the butterfly. So 
that distracts me because it's a dominant part of the image and I would like it to be in, as in focus as the butterfly. But the square crop and, and the color and the exposure all look really, really good. Um, I'm going to give it an eight. I, that that blurriness bugs me a little bit, but there's so many other parts about this I really, really like. I think it deserves an eight. Hummingbird takes a rest. <laughs> and they need it. They beat their wings like 60 or more times a second. It's amazing. Um, nice job in getting the hummingbird tack sharp focus. I mean, look at that eye, everyone. That eye is sharp. There's a catch light in the eye. That really helps bring life to that subject. Um, I really like it from that perspective. You can see the iridescence in the feathers. It's sharp from, you know, tip to tail uh, and I almost to the tail and I'm not worried about that, but I really like that the eye is nice and sharp and you have some nice contrast in here which pulls my eye in, right? There's bright spots and dark spots in there and it really pulls my eye in and gets me here. Even though there's this great big, huge red, you know, hummingbird feeder, my eye still really wants to go here. And that I really appreciate. Um, I think you could leave a little bit more room on the other side of this, that might help. It just feels like that bill is almost gonna clip that edge of that picture. I would try that. It's a little bit bright down here. Um, you're taking it right to the edge of that histogram. Um, it, it, and I don't know if it's clipped, but it's close. And I would just watch that. Um, but the sharpness and, and so forth looks really good. I'll give that an eight. Snail. Oh, I actually have a land snail. Um, I rescued it, very long story, from a greenhouse when I bought some flowers for my hummingbird workshop. And I went to take them under, out of their pots when I got to my location. And there's two land snails there and one disappeared. I don't know what happened to it, but the other one I took because it was in the desert. It wasn't going to live out of any moist area, you know, away from moist area. And I, I still have him. I've had him for nine months and he's sitting in a terrarium in my house. So this makes me smile. Um, I really love, 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 love your focus in here. I mean, that is sharp. That's what we want. And then a few of these leaves are sharp and then everything else is just nicely blurred. We've got a beautiful diagonal lines coming here, kind of some repetition, but they support the subject. They don't take away from it. It's not distracting, it's supporting. And I really, really like that. I would love it if I could see the eyes of the snail better, although we can see you know, the eyes a little bit. And, and yes, these eyes sit up on these stalks of a snail. So it's not antenna, they are eyes. Wish I could see it a little bit better. That would be my only little little teeny tiny thing. Um, but I do appreciate so many other things about this image. I'll give it an eight. Catching the golden rays. This is delightful. Um, I just love, first of all, good job getting down at the eye level of the animal. And it just creates such a more intimate experience. I love this. And the fact that this is like the perfect lesson in uh, using not only composition, but contrast in your images. Notice how your eye goes to the brightest part of that image. And if you squint, it still goes there. That is really great. It draws my eye into that subject. It's not like the brightest spot is over here or somewhere else. It's right where you want it to be. And, and that is beautiful. It's sharp. It's not overexposed. It looks really, really, really nice. And you've got this lovely framing of these plants here. And even these, which would normally hijack my view, support and frame that image. And I know that's not easy to do. I would maybe consider just, just toning that down a little bit. It kind of pulls my eye down there. But overall, the reflection and everything else, really nice job. I'm going to give that a nine. What's that sound? <laughs> I don't know. Um, the squirrel, this tail, first of all, uh, I love, see, the, again, lesson in contrast, see how your eye goes to this tail because it's got these white tips there. I mean, that is really pretty. And then even though his eye is dark, this light part of the ear does pull me towards the face. And that really works well. We've got really pretty light on this uh, squirrel. I am guessing that there was um, like a, topaz or some kind of treatment, it appears to be that um, on this image. And I think that helps this image along because it may be something where you otherwise may have, um, you know, 
kind of overcropped or something like that. Sometimes those things can hide some of those issues. And I think that was a wise choice. Your composition is really nice. Um, there's shadows, but they don't really distract. They just kind of act as an extra leading line. Um, really pretty. And I, I don't mind that. Hopefully I'm guessing right in that there's a treatment there to that. But I think that worked. Um, I'm going to give that an eight. Wasp pupa eating horn tomato caterpillar. Holy cow, that's a bad day for that caterpillar. Um, <laughs> that's an amazing shot. I've never seen that in real life and I've heard about it. And that is an amazing find to see that and look at what's happening to that poor uh, caterpillar. Um, really nice find. I, I'm, I'm amazed by that. Um, nice focus too. You've got these details with these larvae and the um, and the caterpillar. Everything is sharp. It really, really works well. This this uh, stem kind of frames it up nicely. Um, it is, I feel, a, a little on the heavy side as far as being cropped, but I can appreciate what you were trying to do is to eliminate distractions and you know focus on the subject at hand. Um, I would maybe consider, you know, just little things like removing that leaf, if you can, not saying, you know, for competition, sometimes those things are not allowed, but when it's a non-competition type of thing, I, I might consider doing that just to eliminate some distractions, but it's not the end of the world. I'm going to give this a uh, eight. Stamen. That it is. Um, and a little tip. I used to be a floral designer for 15 years. If you ever get that stuff on your clothing, don't brush it off. Get a pipe cleaner and it pulls it right away without staining your clothes. So a little, little trivia for you. I really like, again, your, your club, the members have a really good sense of composition. I like that someone chose to put these on a little bit of a diagonal, whether the flower was angled that way or whether you angled the image that way sorry for that extra streak but that little diagonal diagonal line really helps a composition as opposed to just doing it you know straight up and down it just makes it easier on the eye um it was a bright day when this was captured but i don't think it looks too overexposed it's a little bright you could also try using a diffuser in the future just seeing how that works but it, it, it this is nice I feel again like these are getting a little on the overcropped side. Um, I'm starting to see kind of pixelization and little details in here. Um, it, it just feels like we we kind of zoomed in too far with the max of either a, 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 a digital zoom or that it's been overcropped. If you can post process, I would get rid of that little thing and I would tone down these up here. It'll just make for a cleaner image for you. Uh, but I really appreciate that it's sharp. The composition is nice. I'll give this a seven. Lisa, we're going to have to um, bring that to a six because there's no wildlife. Oh, there. that's right. Thank you. My bad. I'm so sorry. No, no You're problem. right. You're right. Foxy the fox. <laughs> All right. So I happen to have a fox living on my roof for the past week. We have a night camera up there that's capturing him. I don't know what he's doing up there, but he's been up there for a week. Um, so anyway, I can appreciate the fox. Nice headshot composition. I, I like the way it's been composed. I think that looks really nice. The background isn't distracting. It looks like it's on concrete or dirt, but that it's not distracting. My biggest challenge is that I just have black holes for eyes. And this is partly an issue with the way the um, fox is positioned its head, where it's not looking in a way where the light can actually reach its eyes directly. And also partly because it, again, it feels overcropped. I would say there's one thing that I'm generally noticing is that you're working on your compositions, the, you know, the, the group as a whole, working on great compositions but overreaching what the camera or the equipment can handle. And so we're getting kind of overcropping with this and, and losing the detail. And when we lose that detail, it's far harder for your camera to pick up on things. And hence you get that just, you know, dark holes for eyes, dark hole for mouth or for nose. It just isn't able to handle the dynamic range or the tonal range of, of color or contrast from dark to light as well and still show detail. So that would be something I would just 
work on in general is understanding the strengths and limitations of your gear and working within those parameters. Um, and, you know, and like I said, all gear has its strengths and shortcomings, but the composition is nice. I really like it, but um, I really struggle because of the resolution. I'm going to give that a seven. Butterfly. All right, beautiful background that that's on with the, I'm assuming metal of that turquoise blue. Um, blue, turquoise and brown are often color combinations that go really well together. And I know you didn't tell the butterfly to sit on that, but it works well because I think that can be a butterfly that would feel drab in certain other situations. Uh, so I like that for that reason. These beautiful soft lines also kind of frame it up and, and pull my eye into that butterfly as well. You have great light for this, um, great focus. I really enjoy it. The background isn't you know, distracting. It's a little bright over here, but I can live with that. Maybe tone it down a little, but I can really live with that. I am going to give this an eight. All mine. <laughs> All right. So uh, another lovely hummingbird and uh, good job for getting these wings sharp. It's hard to do that and usually requires higher shutter speeds. And, and those are all challenging to do. Um, I, I teach hummingbird workshops. I know how challenging these things are. And one thing that I can appreciate, you have one solid wing and you have a little bit of a second wing showing. If you have a sister image, I would love to see a little bit more of the second wing, just because it feels like a more complete bird at that point. But those are little minor things. Um, but I like that you have a simple background. It's in focus. You've got a catch light in that eye. I really love that. And I love the backlighting a little bit. So you just see those, those wings and that transparency. I think that's really, really pretty. Um, if you can at all crop to get rid of the feeder, I would, but um, I realize certain rules don't allow you to do so. And it does tell a story. So, uh, so I can appreciate that. I really love your focus on this and it doesn't feel overcropped. I'm gonna give that an eight. Buzz, uh, I'm not sure how to say this. <laughs> <laughs> I think that works. Um, look at how clear that butter, or that butterfly, that bee's wings are so clear. The eyes are really clear. Um, there's even a little reflection in those eyes, and that just allows my my eye to get in there and really notice that. And these are the little picky details that really help create a decent image into a, a, a more of a special image. And it's these little details that help. So when I'm photographing something, I'm not only paying attention to, is it focused? Do I have my shutter speed right? I'm like, is there is there a catch light that's showing up or not? You know, our, uh, which way is it facing me? And so I really appreciate the fact that the photographer got the bee's eyes, you know, it's kind of coming a little bit more towards the photographer. And I know there, you know, bees work around a flower and you kind of have to be patient for that, but good job. And then these wings are just so nicely reflective and sharp. And I adore this composition because it gives a little bit of a diagonal look, right? I've kind of got a diagonal going here. I have another diagonal here. And I, I just love the way these petals just take you out to the edge and, and it just, I don't know, it's got beautiful lines to it. Your background's clean and simple. And the pink and the green work really well together because again, they're opposites on the color wheel and color harmony can play so well into improving the overall quality of an image. I know it's cropped, but it doesn't feel overly cropped. I don't feel like I'm losing a lot of detail at this point and it's sharp in all the right places. I'm gonna give this a nine. Tiger Swallowtail Butterfly. All right. So um, beautiful lighting on this. I like that the wings are light, but the background is dark. Um, that's sometimes a really tricky effect to obtain without a lot of post-processing. So um, I really like it from that perspective. I like that we have, again, kind of these flowers just coming in and supporting the image, right? It, it, they're not distracting. It's not like you have lines going every which way. It's just some really pretty lines and the purple and the yellow really work well together. 
I will say that I do feel like this is a little heavily cropped again. I, I don't want to be redundant with that, but I'm just mentioning it. It does feel like we just took it a little too far. I know when I use photos on my iPhone and I, um, you know, just take it too far with that crop or kind of pinch out or, you know, stretch it out, it tends to look a little bit uh, like a loss of detail. And I think that's what's happening here. But other than that, I realize that's an equipment issue, but the, the color choice and the exposure and all those things look really, really well, um, done well. I, I, I know I've been rating images a little lower when they're just overcropped because that really does take away from everything. But I think this is an extra special composition. Um, I debate between a seven and an eight, but I think I'll give it an eight because the lighting and the composition is really good. Just work on the limitations of those cropping issues. And I, I think you will do great. Ricochet rabbit. I love this. Um, so cute. And those ears, you know, we have desert cottontail ears and the, the desert cottontail has these huge long ears. And I love seeing Eastern cottontails because they're like short and stubby and just so darling. Um, good job on the focus with the eye. Um, you'll notice that there's grasses in the foreground and the background. It's so hard to get focus on a subject when there's grasses that always wanna hijack your focus with your camera. So good job on getting this on the eye, on the ears of that rabbit. And your exposure is beautiful, not too bright, not too dark, just, just right with that. And I love that there's some transparency in those ears. You even have catch light in the eyes. And I love that. It's really beautifully done. If there were anything that I would try, I would say just gently tone this down because it is a really light area, but it's, I mean, I'm being nitpicky at this point. Um, I know that there's this piece of grass here that is just out of focus. It's not like you can get rid of that and you couldn't really easily clone that out either, but I'm really not worried about it. I think it tells a story. I love this image. I'm going to give this a nine. I got a big mouth. <laughs> Apparently, that's so cute. Um, I love chipmunks and gosh, this guy is just giving it all he's got with being able to stuff stuff in his mouth. Um, Nice job catching the animal doing something as opposed to just standing there. Um, I really appreciate that so much. It also looks like maybe he's been running through pollen because if you look at the tops of his feet, they're really brightly yellow. Um, maybe that's just the natural color of the fur, but he looks like he's been up to running through something. Um, so I really like that you've got catch lights in the eyes. Um, everything looks good like that. Your background is simple. It's not cluttery and busy. I really like all of those things. Um, it, it feels like it's in focus, but I feel like it either it either needs a little more clarity or perhaps it's been cropped a little much, not bad, but a little on the heavy side um, just by looking at the image quality. But overall, I think it's a nice image. You've got nice lighting and I appreciate what you've done here. Uh, I'm gonna give this an eight. Monarch. All right, pretty lighting on this. I really enjoy the kind of the backlighting and the translucency of these petals. And then the butterfly itself is very pretty. The uh, background is somewhat, somewhat distracting, although in some ways it kind of looks artsy and kind of interesting. Um, I do feel like it might even work better if this were off to one side or the other, like, you know, probably more like on this side. I think right dead center with a with a rectangular crop sometimes um, creates some issues, but um, but there's something about it I still really like. My, my big concern with the background would be this bright spot here. I think those kind of hijack my view, um, but, I would say the person who's shooting this really knows how to pay attention to light, and that's so important in photography. I'm going to give I'm going to give this a seven, but I think with a little work, even perhaps cropping in camera or on your image now, you could improve that. Really keep paying attention to the light. You're doing a good job with that. I wasn't in the garden. <laughs> 
guilty. Um, I like that someone chose to do a black and white wildlife. I appreciate that. Not everybody does that. And it can so help simplify a background that maybe has a lot of color or clutter. Um, this is a really nice choice. Your choice of aperture where the foreground is clearly blurred out, your background is clearly blurred out, and your rabbit is in perfect focus. I can see a catch light here. I can see the little hairs and his whiskers and eyebrows. I love that. Even the little tear in his ears, really nicely done and right down at eye level. Somebody was laying on the ground doing this, uh, or maybe the rabbit was up on a hill, but either way, right at eye level, it makes such a difference. I want to give this one a nine. It deserves it. Too hot to hop. <laughs> it's a rabbit that's out in Phoenix, I'm thinking. Um, I really get that. And I'm unclear. It looks like maybe a treatment was done to this image, um, more so than maybe too much cropping in. Um, I'm not, I don't have any issues with, with kind of doing artistic treatments to this. I'm just feeling like it's um, a little busy somehow. It, maybe there's some ways to work through that. But, you know, your composition's nice and you found a rabbit laying down, which again, doing something different. Um, the background is simple, which I really appreciate that. I'm just struggling a little bit with so much contrast and all these details, right? We've got light and dark and light and dark and, you know, all of that. And then the rabbit kind of has the same thing. It just feels like it's all screaming at the same volume for attention. And I want the rabbit to scream and the other stuff to be supporting that rabbit. So... A little bit of work maybe um, I know kind of the brighter light might not have helped that also I can appreciate you doing a treatment with it to try to change that effect a little bit I'm assuming that's what's done um, I'm going to give this a seven all righty we have uh, five nines so we need first second and third out of there all right <clears throat> Give me a tough choice. All right. Can you see all... anything? Okay. I, I sure do. Yeah, all right. they're also good. So here's uh, one image. Okay. A second image. A third. A fourth. And the fifth one. All right, you guys do not make this easy for me, um, but I am going to go with uh, the fawn as number one, first place. Okay. Second place will be the frog. Oh, hold on one second. Oh, so, sorry. All right, the frog, this one. Yes. Okay. And the last three are so wonderful, but I'm going to choose the black and white rabbit because it's different. It's creative. I really love that perspective and, and everything about it. All right. And this is an HM. So that's one, <clears throat> two, and now we need three HMs and you have 11. All right. So this is image one, okay. two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and the eleventh one. All right. So I think my final choices for these, it's a hard decision, but I'm going to go with the B on the pink flower. Um, the first one for HM. This one? Yeah. Uh, there we go. Yep, that one. Okay. And uh, it just commands attention, even though I know there's a few issues there with the focus. And then I'm going to go with the snail. I just thought the composition on that was so lovely. Two. All right, and I need uh, one, more. one more. Oh, you need one more, my bad, I'm sorry. Sure. Oh my goodness, who is it going to be? Which image? Um, this is tough stuff, you guys. I'm gonna go with, um, 
uh, let's see here. I'm going to go with even there's a treatment to it, but I really liked it. The squirrel. Yeah, I think the squirrel. Yep. This one here. The lighting, the composition, everything was really lovely with it. Yeah. All right. All right. Now we'll review this contest. All right. Honorable mentions. First one is just buzzing around, Ed Horniker. Congratulations, Ed. Snail, Kathy Detana. Congratulations, Kathy. What's that sound? Valerie Williams. Congratulations, Valerie. Busy, <laughs> Vicki Tavico, honorable mention. Congratulations, Vicki. Ricochet Rabbit, Melinda Matlack. Congratulations, Melinda. Third place winner. I wasn't in the garden, Matt Rank. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you. Second place. Also, Matt, catching the golden race. Congratulations, Matt. Thank you. The rabbit is shot in my backyard with a 500. So <laughs> I love it. I was laying on the ground. <laughs> I could tell. It really shows that you put your work into it. And I loved that image. And nice job with doing a black and white, too. I, I just think it's a great, you know, deviation. I had to go that way because uh, I didn't like the grass that was in his face mm -hmm. it was too much and it's black and white i'm like yep yeah, that that worked out because now it, the grass isn't as distracting so yes it really makes the rabbit shine nice nice yeah. choice on that i really enjoyed that and do we show the fawn as well uh the fawn will get shown after you pick best oh that's show. right that's right okay so now we're on the last group there's 16 images okay uh this is the salon group all right and here we go. B. All right. Beautiful B at that. I love the coloring of that B. Um, and, you know, the, the lupine that he is on or she, um, you know, there's so much going on, but yet it all still really supports that B and the color harmony, I think, is really pretty on that. Um, I think it's, you know, a little bit hard for me to tell. I think the eye is pretty sharp um there's a little bit of forward the motion blur on the front legs but i get that it's flying you know i can see the wings blurring as well and i appreciate the person who's trying to catch a bee in flight in those flowers i love the flowers that support that bee um i think a shutter speed would be a little bit higher if possible to kind of freeze those wings so that i could see that and freeze those legs a little bit but you know, motion blur is something that is sometimes a, a personal choice as to whether you want to show it or not. But I really love, even though it's busy, it's like a beautiful busy with those flowers in the background. I'm going to give this an eight. Turkeys follow me. <laughs> and what does that tell you? <laughs> I love it. Um, nice job getting all of them in focus, um, getting the background the foreground you know everything looks clean they're in the garden you can clearly tell it's garden wildlife um i like this i um if i had anything to say i might just say to get rid of the um the, the couch or chair or whatever is up there i wonder if a different crop or a different positioning with the photographer could have eliminated that a little bit it's a little distracting but you know, I'm, I'm getting in a little bit nitpicky here. I will give that an eight. It's nice and clear and properly exposed. And what was the score? I'm sorry. Oh, an eight. That's sorry. Totally <laughs> That's all right. There you go. Red foxes. Who is there? 
Oh, I love that there's backlighting on these foxes and you can still clearly make out what they are, but all this rim light and yet you still have light on the face like that's such a hard thing to do, um, you know, and find that right light. I really appreciate that. Um, nice job from that perspective. And I love that there's two. Uh, that's a little something different. Your background is supportive in this image. It doesn't detract a whole lot from the image. Um, your foreground is really blurry. And it to me, it, it the irony is usually this works well, but for some reason it kind of creates a barrier for me. Like I end up going there first. So I wonder if even like getting rid of it and you know like um, not drawing a perfectly straight line but something like that and something like that in a crop might really help that so that it's not so strong um a, a kind of a distractor but i really like that you have subject background separation and i'm going to give that one an eight friend in the new york botanical garden <laughs> Well, that's a good friend to have. Uh, again, beautiful sharpness on the eye. You know, I always say if the eye isn't sharp, nothing else matters. And, and that really looks nice as far as that goes in, in catching that uh, chipmunk. Um, I noticed that the tail is a little bit, I think, cropped off here. I'd either leave a little bit more room or make it an intentional uh, crop so that it doesn't feel like an accident. I think that will help that quite a bit. And yet I say that and I realize these rocks in the foreground appear dark. So I'm sure you're trying to not have a distractor and still try to get most of the tail in. So just something to think about with that. Um, I would probably... Uh, and again, I'm just doing this quickly. I would consider maybe cropping like so or somewhere right in there because you've got 50% of the image that really isn't anything that supports necessarily that uh, rodent. And so by cropping some of that out, that might be a little too strong of a crop, but somewhere right in there, I think might help you because um, I come up here to the top part and there's really nothing for me there. It doesn't really add to the image. So I would do that, um, but your sharpness is really nice. Your, your exposure and your lighting on that animal is really nice. I'll give that an eight. Lisa, just so you know, we weren't able to see what you, the- Oh, um, the drawings? Oh, yeah, no. I wonder why that, that let me try restarting it. It seems like, um, I yeah, don't know I why. <laughs> if you yeah, want to show no. us your cropping real quick, I'll yeah, see that. I, I just closed it and then opened it again. Can you see any lines there? Yes. Okay, so somewhere, I, I don't know, I'm kind of playing around drawing not even lines, but somewhere in there, I would maybe crop it or maybe even, you know, do something. I'm just kind of playing around or reposition yourself just to get a little bit of a, um, you know, a, a, a better uh, kind of supporting foreground and background. But this might have been the best option you had at the time. And I fully recognize that. But those are my suggestions. Female cardinal with holly berry. <laughs> All right. Um, I love that you featured a female. <laughs> I think that's cool. Um, I love that you have the catch light and that it's in focus and you actually can see the berry in her mouth. So really nice job there. One thing I struggle with is this stem really splits your image right in half. And I, I get it. She's on the branch. You know, it's like, it, you can't really remove it. Um, but I'm wondering if a little more time spent, I know it's hard, um, might have given you a little better composition. This might have been the best you could do. Um, but I just, it does split the image right in half and, and kind of is a distracting element in there. Nevertheless, I like that you subdued the edges with a little vignetting that takes away my attention from the edges and brings it more towards the bird. And the bird's sharp despite that stem. And, and that's hard to do because your camera wants to focus on the stem when it really needs to be focused here. So you did manage to do that. Um, I do think that stem in the center though really takes away from um, from me enjoying that bird as much as I could. I'm going to give it a seven for that reason. Um, but I think there's really some simple ways. If you keep doing that, you've got a lot of things right that you're doing. Just keep working on that composition. Ruby-throated hummingbird. 
All right. I don't get to see them living out here in Arizona. We get all kinds of other ones, but I miss Michigan with these ruby throats. And look at how sharp this image is. I mean, the 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 the, um, the bill, the head. I think the eye is nice and sharp. The wings are sharp. The the one closest to us, the one behind it, is a little blurry because of you know depth of field. Uh, but that's really nice. And I love your simple flower. And the lighting is really nice. I am noticing again that pixelization in the background. I think that's an overcropping issue. Just pay attention to those things because, you know, when you blow it up at all to, to put it, print it at all, it's really going to become apparent. Um, and I think, you know, again, that's just an issue with um, kind of overextending the capabilities of your gear. Um, so I would work on that. But a lot of things really work nicely for this image. Um, I struggle because I, I hate it when things are overcropped, but I also really appreciate the composition, the sharpness, the flower, the simplicity of this. I will give it an eight. Normally I'd think about it as a seven because of that cropping, but do work on that in the future. That's going to really improve the, the people liking your images, not overcropping. All right, here is another beautiful hummingbird and what a gorgeous flower that you caught this near. I really appreciate that so much. Um, your composition is lovely. There's a strong catch light in the eye. I love that you didn't include the whole flower. It's just a little bit in this beautiful sweeping lines of the stamens. Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. It's sharp. Um, I really love that. The wings are a little bit wing blurred, but not much. And I don't mind a little implied motion in a hummingbird. Um, I do see, again, um, some of the that grid in the background, you know, that looks like this. And I feel like that's just taking the cropping a little too far. It's not as strong as the other one that we looked at. Um, but a lot of things really work well in here. I am going to give this an eight because I love the composition. The orange and the green really play well together with the hummingbird. Um, but do watch that cropping. It, it's, it seems to be a trend. And I think that one thing can help solve um, a lot of people's problems if you improve on that um, across the club. And another suggestion I'll make, and feel free and, and do your rankings, but, um, or whatever you're doing on your end, Matt, but one other thing is perhaps some of you could consider uh, Topaz Gigapixel. Um, I don't work for Topaz, this isn't an advertisement, but it can help upsize your images and to some extent help with, you know, that, that pixelization and, um, you know, letting you take your cropping a little bit further than the native image would allow you to do. That could be an option. And I think they have a free trial that you could try something with for a little while. So that's another suggestion. What was your score for this one? Um, this one was an eight. An eight. Okay. Yeah. So make sure. Lisa, what, what, I'm sorry, but what was your score for the last one? Um, it was a seven. It was just so strongly pixelated. Okay. I think it was no, a seven. That's fine. I just want to make sure I heard right. And, and if I am remembering wrong, please someone type it in the chat window. No, 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 no. <laughs> Matt, got it. Matt got it right. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I just really, you know, that just takes away so much when you got this grid, you know, in your images and, and that. No, that's, that's fine. I just wanted to make sure we had. Yeah had what you said <laughs> yeah no problem um this is interesting this little uh i think it's a is it a kit fo uh, a fox kit um i want to say maybe this is in the arctic i'm i'm not sure maybe um someone has an idea or maybe it was in a uh you know a captive scenario but look at the gesture with the tongue sticking out and the eyes have catch lights. They're so nicely in focus. I really appreciate that so much with your image. Um, I, I like that you used a gentle vignette on it. It really pulls my eye into the center. Um, it appears that you did some Gaussian blur around the edges. I don't think you need to do that. Um, I think it's okay without that. Sometimes that can get a little distracting. But I do like the gentle vignette and I love the lighting in the focus. I'll give that an eight. I know I've been giving a lot of eights tonight, but these this is a, a serious group and, and I really like that image. Love how the weeds frame the face as well in the front. Butterfly. All right. 
So this monarch, um, again, gorgeous with the flower in focus as well as the butterfly. I really appreciate that. I like the diagonal lines here quite a bit. Um, I would maybe consider taking this butterfly and just recomposing, um, whoops, well, that's a little bit off. But if we had a uh, tic-tac-toe grid, I am gonna guess that maybe it's somewhere a little bit more down here where you could orient that butterfly, just reposition it a little bit. It's not bad, but um, I think that would add a little bit more to that image. Um, I do think this is a little bright back here. It's just a little bit busy. So work on that depth of field. Um, use a, a lower we aperture. Can't, we can't see, can't see that right. again. I don't know why that keeps happening. Um, I will try it again. Um, yeah, I just don't know. It's, it's like annotating on my end. I don't know why it's not coming across. I apologize for that. Um, so the background's a little blurry, or excuse me, a little busy, and I would love it a little bit blurrier so that we really can focus on that butterfly and the, the single flower. So work on the aperture, um, get a lower aperture setting and get closer to your subject than your subject is to the stuff behind it. That will help those two things will make a world of difference for you. But the lighting is great. The diagonal lines is really uh, nice on this. Um, Boy, uh, I, I'll give this an eight, but I think the, the biggest weakness is the background and the biggest strength is that light and that diagonal and the focus. I think you did a great job on those things. Hold on. <laughs> and it is. Wow, this is a really neat image. Um, love the detail and the focus. The eyes are in focus. The antenna are really nice and sharp, especially that first one closest to us. The legs, the hair, the beautiful flowers that it's on. Um, the background is clean and simple and, and beautiful. The lighting is really nice. I really enjoy this image. I will say one thing, I'm seeing that grid again, and perhaps again, it could be a Zoom thing, but I am seeing that grid in the background. I think that's something uh, we need to pay attention to uh, with the cropping. But the quality in this is really nice as far as the focus. I will give this an eight, but just in general, watch the cropping and the quality of your images. I think that could be a good maybe topic for discussion at a future session of just how, how, how much is too much cropping and how can we improve on that? Tree swallow in the garden. Well, isn't this an interesting image? I've never seen anything quite like this and I adore this. Um, the depth of field is very interesting. Um, I would love to know more about how the photographer shot this, but the lighting is exquisite. That blue just works so well against that purple and the light. Um, I'm really a fan of this image. It's just lovely. I'm going to give this, an, an, and I don't think the cropping is too bad on this. It's, it's If it is, it's hard to see from my perspective. Um, I really love this and I love the way it's composed so well. I'm going to give that a nine. Resting on a dead sunflower. This is another great example of how the background supports the subject. It doesn't take away from it. You've got a sharp, sharp hummingbird, sharp flower. It looks really nice. Um, it, you know, the details, the hair and the sunflower, all of that really come through nicely. And I really enjoy it. Um, I, I love that bend in the flower. I think that's really, really pretty. I'm going to give this, oh, this is a tough choice. Um, I'm going to give this a nine. Winter feeding. Oh, I love robins. Um, you don't see them as often here as I did in the Midwest. Um, nice job with the composition and that all the repetition of the berries. And it, it just is a lovely image from that perspective. And I love the light on this. Um, and, and just the simple diagonal line uh, that this branch creates down here at the bottom. Don't know if you can see me drawing or not, but um, that diagonal line is really nice. And the break in the berries so that none of them are you know, kind of merging with the head or interrupting the bird. I think all of those things are, are really, really nice. I'm going to give that an eight. Hummingbird clear wing moth. 
All right. Don't see these very often. Nice find. Um, I enjoy that. And I love when things, you know, it's feeding, it's actively feeding. The proboscis is in the flower. Really nice job with that. Um, clean, simple background. Um, the the uh, moth itself, the eye is in focus, the antenna are in focus. So good job with that. That is a hard thing to do. Uh, again, I noticed this grid and I hope that I'm not misjudging something and it's just a, a, the way the images are being transferred um, through Zoom and the internet and you know all of that. But I do still see that grid and I'm just wondering if it's just overcropped um, a bit. But aside from that, Everything else is really nicely done. Um, that front wing is a little bit out of focus and it kind of bugs me. I would love to see it sharper, but better to have the eye sharp and the wing a little out of focus than the other way around. I'll give this an eight. American Goldfinch, New Jersey State Bird. Oh, this was the very first bird that I learned how to identify when I was eight and birds have changed my life. Um, so it's fun to see these birds. They just make me happy no matter what. So nicely done. Beautiful composition. I really love that angle of the plant with the, you know, the kind of competing angle of the, uh, the goldfinch. The lighting is really nice. It really looks beautiful. Um, again, I see a tiny bit of that, that grid, but um, it feels like I'm just losing some detail in that. It feels a little overcropped. I think you could pull back a little bit and it would still be okay. But the composition is exquisite. The, you know, everything about it, the color, the exposure, all of those things are spot on. I really enjoy that. I will give that an eight. Alien Invader. It is, and I think I've heard of the name of these, and I can't think of it right off the top of my head, but they are an invasive species, though they're beautiful. Um, interesting subject that you found. I, I like the subject a lot. I think it has a lot of potential, but I feel like the background to me is competing so much with it because it's such a busy patterned insect. I feel like it would stand out so much more if you could potentially move it, I don't know, to you know a simpler background or wait for it to move to a simpler background. I think that would help it quite a bit. It just feels, um, it's just a lot to look at and I can't quite connect with the eyes of it because I keep getting drawn to you know, the back and the red part. Um, and I know that's not the face of the insect. It's an important part, but I want to be able to connect with the face too. And there's so much busyness. I would work on that. I would give that a seven. All right, we got two nines. So I need a first and second. All right. We have this image or that image. All right, my first choice goes to the uh, swallow. Swallow, okay. So that will make this one second. All righty, I need a third place. Okay. Out of 11 eights. All right, so a third place as I look through each of these. This is one. Okay. Two, three, Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. All right, I'm going to give it to the goldfinch eleven. The composition and lighting and everything is just gorgeous on that. Okay, now I need three HMs. All right. So you have this one left, this one, 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 or that one. All right, so I have three left for the HMs, right, Matt? Correct. All right, so this is tough. I tell you, you guys, there's a lot of really neat images in here. I am going to give an HM2. 
um, the foxes. I think that's just a neat capture. This one? Yes, the pair of foxes. I do enjoy yeah. that image. And I will give it to um, the bee that's in between the uh, robin and the butterfly. This one? Yes, hold on. Yes, beautiful. Okay. And one more. One more. Um, yeah, gosh, there's so many neat images. I'm going to give it to the hummingbird with the orange lily. All right. Now we'll review this one, and then you have one more task, and that's All right. the show. That's a tricky one. Great job, everybody. There's a lot of really neat images. And for those that are newer to photography, um, I hope that some of the comments I've given are helpful um, and that you've benefited from seeing a lot of your peers work. And it's always a work in progress. I have images that don't place in contests too, even though I've been doing this professionally for a while. Um, so don't let one opinion dissuade you from keeping going with your passion and enjoying what you do. Um, and if it's been helpful, or I have selected one of your images for an award, congratulations. There was a lot of really nice images here and I appreciate your uh, brave, you know, your braveness in, in submitting to this contest. And uh, thanks for bringing me in tonight. So let's go, <laughs> we'll see what happens with the best in show. Excellent. Okay, honorable mention, level four. Can you see it? Because I can't see it. I cannot no. yet. All right, let me uh, escape and try again. Okay. Hold on. All right, all right, there we go. There we go. Red Foxes, who is there? Francisco Gomez, honorable mention. Congratulations, Francisco. Ruby's Approach, Lynn Padwe. Congratulations, Lynn. Hold on, Harvey Birnbaum, honorable mention. Congratulations, Harvey. And third place, American Goldfinch, New Jersey State Bird, Lynn Padwe. Congratulations, Lynn. Second place, Resting on a Dead Sunflower, Sue Fielder. Congratulations, Sue. All right, I'm gonna put together the best to show real quick. All right, and here's the last task for you. All right. Um, we need the best to show. So this is one image, second image, third image, and the fourth to choose from. All right, I am, I am really, um, this is a tough decision. I'm gonna base my decisions on some uh, technical excellence, composition, color, and also not, you know, overcropping or any of those things. So I am gonna go with my um, best in show. God, this is a hard decision. <sighs> I'm, I'm like really looking and like watching them go through one more time. Um, I can go back to anyone you want. That's okay. I, I, I got it. I'm just looking at some of those finer points and I am going to go with the fawn. It's just well executed, really nice lighting, great shutter speed, doesn't feel overly cropped, um, just a beautiful image. But those others, um, uh, they are so close. I'm, I'm really a fan, but I, I just love the fawn. It was a really beautiful shot. Nice job. 
All right, now we'll review this contest. And this is when we get to see all the first places. All right. And they get to tell us about them. So the swallow in the garden is level four first place, Francisco Gomez. Beautiful image. Francisco, you wanna tell us about it, where you were? Yeah, this, um, this actually I took uh, I, in Washington. I was in Washington. Um, uh, I, I went to see the, um, uh, the, the cherry blossoms and uh, I was lucky enough to see uh, these uh, swallows moving, these three swallows moving around. And then I, I positioned myself in an area that I saw they were going by and I was lucky to capture this, to be able to capture this. Now, I did help the uh, background a little bit in Photoshop because I think that I shot this at about 7.1, I think. Okay. So it was a little, it was a little more in focus, but I, I really did a, a nice job of separating the uh, flowers and stuff in there, in the background, so to make it real. Well, in, in Francisco, just photographing a swallow in flight, like kudos on that alone. <laughs> Like that's so hard to do. I actually um, was able to capture a couple of them, you know, yeah. but this was the best. Yeah, it's a it, it's a, such an unusual image, and I I really really enjoy it. And you know, my hats off to you for like I said, capturing swallows in flight and getting that beautiful wings, you know, spread out. If nobody's ever done it, it is like the bird in flight ultra challenge. I don't think there's a bird that's harder to photograph than swallows in flight. So it, it well is done. Very hard. Very it is. Hard. It and, is. And yeah, good. really nice. What, job. Uh, Francisco, what lens were you using for this? Do you think? I, I was I was using the eighty to four hundred. Okay. Nice job. Very cool. Okay, and this is uh, level two or level three first place. Matt, I'm not sure. Uh, might be two. I'm not positive. I'm not sure. Well, anyway, Subra, hey. uh, congratulations. You want to tell us about this? Is it a cell phone shot? No, no, no. This was a, <laughs> This is not a cell phone shot. Okay. <laughs> well, I had to ask because you said you're shooting with cell phones. So. It was uh, the last time, yes. Um, <laughs> now, this was done with the Sony 90 millimeter uh, macro lens. Um, and I used a couple of extension tubes. So I think... Um, Give me this is probably uh, almost a 2x uh, magnification shot uh, with the extension tubes. I also used a uh, flash with a soft box on it. I wondered about that because the lighting is exquisite. It's really hard to get that kind of lighting right. naturally. So I, I was really impressed by that. And all those little details stand out so nicely. It's really a gorgeous image. Congratulations, Subra. Thank you. Uh, so this was done in, uh, in Lindhurst uh, last month. Uh, that's, uh, you know, the, the Cart Park in uh, Secaucus, Lind Lindhurst, that area, the Meadowlands, uh, mm -hmm. um, that area, yeah. Um, so yeah, um, that's, uh, that's about it. Um, I think the challenge with uh, these macros is, you know, you have to get, you know, with my lens at 1-1, one, one, the working distance is five inches. So you're going to get and the bee doesn't like this huge black thing, mm -hmm. you know, getting five inches um, when it's feeding. So, you know, you have to use, um, you know, a, a, a decent FPS and shoot more than one. I, I think I was doing like around eight to 10 FPS, um, but then the flash doesn't keep up. And, and also at that, um, you know, uh, magnification, your uh, depth of field is only a millimeter or so. So, you know, there's, there's a lot of constraints. Um, so yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm glad it came up well. Yeah. It, 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 it is a very technically challenging picture. I mean, macro uh, it looks way simpler than it is. And I can appreciate all that went into it and the risk factor, right? You're sitting there, you know, in inches from a, a bee and trying to not pressure it, you know, I, I can appreciate so many of those challenges. It's really well done. Thank you. Okay, and um, first place in our level one is uh, Beautiful Bee by Margaret Maurice. Let's see if I can find her. 
I'm right here. Okay. Hi. <laughs> yes. Um, with this shot, there was a, like I crop, I did crop it, but there, I think I should have went with the other one, but um, yeah, I found this little bee uh, in the garden area. So yeah, I just, I just zoomed in. I did zoom in, but like, like I said, there was two shots and I went with the closer up one and I see how, um, yeah, I was just wondering what she would have said with the other picture, you know, with the other picture, not so cropped, but either way, it told the story. He was a very hungry little bee. Yeah. And he was doing a fine job. <laughs> well, I and, love him. Yeah. And like I said, Maurice, you have a great eye for the composition and the colors that are going on here. I mean, there's some issues, mm. you know, that, that can be fixed, but, um, but hey, submit the other one the next time, perhaps. But um, yeah, keep, thank keep you. going. You have, a, you have a really nice sense of composition. And I think that is Aww. one of the things that's hard uh, for some people to learn. So you're off to a really good start with that. The rest will come. Um, but oh, thank you. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you so much. You're welcome. And last but not least, our best of show, which is Risky Fawn, Susan Little from, uh, I believe, Level 3. Congratulations, Susan. Uh, tell us about it. Very pretty. Susan's coming to. Okay, thanks, Tam. I need to turn off the sound. On. Am I on? Yes. Yes, we Is have. Is there an it. echo? There is. I'll, I'll mute Tam. Okay. Is that better? Nah, maybe that you were on Tam. Hold on one second. I'll have to mute the other one. Is it, am I unmuted? Yes. yes, you're unmuted. Thank you. you. Now. Yeah, this was on our septic field. <laughs> 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 there were actually two fawns. And they were just running around after each other and running around like crazy. And I was just so lucky to get a couple shots in focus and the whole fawn in focus. So it's a challenge when they're running around that fast. And that was one of the things that appealed to me is so often, you know, I see images in the wildlife just kind of standing there and it's pretty, but this really shows you, I mean, he's at a full gallop, his back legs are in front of his front legs, you know, right, and, and right. The, the catch light in the eye and your separation of subject from the background, yet the background works. I would have never known that this is in a septic field. Um, <laughs> I love that that backstory is there about it, but you know, all the little details just really, I mean, there was, there were several images that I just got Gosh, you know, it was I'm like, which all. one do you I pick? They're all so that. nice, but I just thought this was really nicely done and kind of an interesting position with that fawn. You don't really see these pictures that often with that kind of neat action. So well done and great focus. Thank you so much. Congratulations. Thank you. Okay. Well, um, it has been wonderful. Uh, we really appreciate um, everything that you did um, for for us tonight, Lisa. You're welcome. It was my pleasure, and and I really appreciate you know the newer folks that joined in tonight that are maybe from nearby clubs or thinking about joining too. I hope this was helpful. You know, I, I always want to give people things that they can take with them, no matter what level of photographer that they are, because um, it just helps you grow and it helps you know you learn some things and there were wonderful images and I see a lot of both budding talent and well-bloomed talent in this group and it was an honor to be here I hope my comments were helpful Lisa you were great oh thank Lisa, you Vicky. Lisa thank you so much you're thank welcome you. You're welcome. I hope it inspires you to, to do more. I see images like yours and it makes me want to get back out there and shoot it. I've been busy doing other things lately. I got to get my camera out again. So it, it helps me too. And, and this was a lot of fun. Nice meeting everyone too. And uh, thank you for your 
comments in the chat window. And I also put my contact information and a link to my newsletter if anybody's interested. I usually announce workshops and things just to that group first before the public and uh, you know other nuggets from time to time. And I don't spam anybody. And you'll get a tutorial video with it too for how to photograph wildlife. So anyway, that's in the chat comments. And thank you again for having me be here. And Matt, thanks for working with me and uh, making this all come to fruition. So I appreciate it. And Can I comment? Yes. I don't think that Debbie, I think Debbie was out of order when she influences the judge. I think it should be left up to the judge. We had that problem before with another the president where the president interfered and that's not right. And that's why- that's What are you talking reasons. about? I'm not sure. At the first division, the fourth division, the first division when she said they should be sixes because they're not guarding wildlife. I don't think, I think Debbie's out of order for interfering. Uh, no. And, and we respect oh, yeah. your opinion, but it was oh, yeah. uh, wildlife had to include uh, some type of animal. It couldn't just be just a flower. She leave it up to the judge and you should not interfere. Sorry. Uh, no, I, I just want to. Uh -uh. Yeah, you can be mine. sorry because you're wrong. Okay. And, and I apologize. Your it was opinion. A your opinion. It, it I'm was not a wrong. Wildlife. I'm just, not wrong. It was, it That's was why we're losing membership wildlife. because of Read the way the definition, Ed. these things are judged. Um, just to clarify, they did tell me that it was supposed to be wildlife only, and it was my bad that I forgot that rule. I, I do several of these uh, at back to back, and I, I just had a brain fart. So that was communicated to me. That was my bad for not picking up on that. Um, they did communicate to me in a private meeting that anything that would be disqualified would get a six, and that would have been included in that. So I just wanted to clarify what I heard, and, and it was my own brain fart that that screwed up the beginning of that, I'm not blaming so I you. apologize. I'm not blaming you. It should be up, <laughs> left up to the judge and not up to the president. Sorry, that's my opinion. And that's why we're losing membership. <laughs> yeah, we're not losing members. Yes, you are. Okay. You sure. had over 200 members one time. Now you're down to 60. Okay. Yeah. You know. Have a good night. I have an early morning meeting and I'm not going to fight tonight. I'm too tired. <laughs> well, I appreciate good night, Valerie. It. Thanks again. Lisa. Thank you, Lisa. Valerie. Thank Great you job. so Bye, much, Valerie. everyone. Have Lisa, a wonderful I hope night. we could get you here for one of your presentations. Sure. Yeah. Just let me know and, and I will try to work I, out my schedule. So I saw your, your fine art presentation. Yes. And it is amazing. Oh, thank you so much. And uh, a couple things coming up. I'll be at PSA International in uh, South Dakota speaking on Wednesday night of that event. And uh, I'll be at Space Coast if anybody goes to the Space Coast Festival in January. Um, I, I'm not sure if it's going to be online or in person yet, but I will be at that. And um, I'll also have some other things coming up online as well. So we'll be around and, and holler if you need me down the road. It was really fun seeing everyone's images tonight i enjoyed it very much it was fun having you thank you <laughs> thanks, thanks so much lisa. everyone you're welcome you have a wonderful evening good night thank you good night, thank you. Thank you. Good night you. everybody good night yes you are hi marianne hi <laughs> how you doing well mary